Hello, this is Debbie again, outside again. I went inside for a little while after I did my last video and I thought, no, I can't stop today. There's one more I wanna talk about. Now, my last video was on teaching your kids to be honest and not discipline, uh, teaching them through their discipline. And you can go back and listen to that one. But a lot of people had called me and talked to me about the world and how dishonest it is and what could they do to help their kids. Well, teaching them to be honest, to stand up and square their shoulders and put their hands on the hip and admit what they did, guess what that does to the future? When they're adults, they are gonna be the kind of people that have no problem with confrontation and they have no problem with standing up and being honest about their lives or about anything else in life. If they have answers or if they have things that they're doing uh, with the public and they need to be honest about it, they will have no problem doing that because they've practiced for 10, 15 years in your household. Well, I got to thinking, what else could they practice? Oh, there are so many things. When you talk with your kids about everything, they are practicing conversation. We live in a world where everything is text, everything is reading an article or scrolling on Facebook or scrolling on Google or whatever. And rarely do we stand face to face. Wow, the wind's really picking up. You probably hear my wind chimes, but um, Rarely do we stand face to face and handle a confrontation. Um, I have seen a lot of things online where different people have talked about the ghosting thing, where somebody just doesn't like what you're doing and so they just disappear. That's horrible, that's horrible. It's, um, it's important to be able, even if you feel like someone is toxic and you have to move away, it is important to be able to have that confrontation. And when you are constantly conversing with your child, when you are asking them to stand up and own it and be honest about what they believe or what they do, what are they gonna do when they're 19 and they're out in the world? They are going to be virtually impossible to stop because they're not afraid. Uh, sometimes we use discipline in a manner that makes them afraid to speak up. And that's not a good thing. Now, I know that there are some people that are just automatically quiet and they're the sweet people and they're the people you just love to be around because they're always smiling at you. And that's great. But God also created people like me that have a big enough mouth that they are willing to use it. Um, I've told people before in college, I was known as Motormouth, and my best friend's name was Jet Jaw, and you were in trouble if you tried to get between us because it was just constantly, but I loved conversing with her. We didn't agree about everything, but we had this ability to love each other and to talk to each other and just really get down in the meat of a conversation. And too many kids nowadays don't have that ability. What they do is they say, this is my opinion and you have to accept it. And if you don't, I hate you. That's horrible to live a life like that. If I ever have to tell someone, I'm sorry, I disagree with you. Or if they are toxic to me and I have to say, I'm sorry, I'm, I need to move away from this. I never do it like, mean and I hate you or whatever, I tell them I'm going to pray for them, that I hope they have a good life, that they, I hope that maybe at some point they can come back and we can agree to disagree, that I hope that God blesses their life. I mean, that's the way to have conversations that lead you to a hopeful life because you are finding out new ideas and seeing new ideas don't always invade your own ideas. New ideas can help you say, oh, that's what you think? Man, I am more convinced 
that what I'm thinking is right because your way of thinking has holes in it. I, I appreciate you sharing it with me, but yeah, I'm going to stick with what I'm thinking. So sometimes a negative view can hone your own view. It can make your own view sharper and clearer. And I think that's a good thing. So one of the other ways that you can help your children grow up and be strong in whatever is coming down the pipe in America, teach them to be able to have conversations, deep conversations about deep things. And that instead of saying, you can't say that to me, say about a, his, a history fact. Instead of telling the other person, oh, you can't say that Abraham Lincoln was this way or that way. Teach them to say, you know what? I'm going to find out if that's true or not. And then go looking for the answers. Because the point of conversation is to get to the truth. And too many people don't understand that. They think the point of conversation is to win. Uh, no. It's to find out what is the truth. What will make help me live a better life? What will make me a better person? What will make me happier in the end? Because the beginning of anything you do has a lot of shiny uh, trinkets to it. And by the end, those shiny trinkets sometimes have turned into death traps. So we want to make sure that we know what the end result of our thoughts are and whether they're really going to make us happy or really give us a good life. So teach your children to converse with you. And I can't promise that if you teach them to converse with you that they won't be like me talking all the time. But I hope that you will do uh, do teach them to converse with you because it will be the best thing you've ever done. God bless you as you help your children grow. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye now.